Just one more week left in the Ball State men's basketball season and our final edition of the James Whitford Show. Welcome into the program, everybody, with the head coach, James Whitford. Joel Gadek, glad to have you along with us. And a week for you guys where you, you play some really good defense on Wednesday. You come mm -hmm. out and you give all you got to mm -hmm. a team that's right now going to get a triple bye in the MAC tournament. Mm -hmm. Two pretty good showings. We did. We, uh, we didn't have a good sh particular shooting week, but I thought we two of our better defensive efforts for the week, and, uh, and uh, we're, in, we're in a position really right there at the end of both games to win. Let's talk about Western Michigan first, and you get Matt Kamenicki back mm -hmm. first and foremost, and that kind of gives you a boon if for no other reason than in the back of your mind you're thinking, we've got Matt Kamenicki back. Yeah, it really helps for that, and then, you know, because we're only playing seven guys, just having an eighth helps the legs of everybody else, and uh, unfortunately... As is the case for Matt, about six minutes in, he took a hard fall, and and uh, we'd sat him out for a month. And six minutes in, he was kind of back to where he was. So, uh, but nonetheless, he gave us a good boost in that game, certainly uh, emotionally. What clicked defensively? Thirty-nine percent is what Western shot, best in eleven games for you guys. Uh, I thought I thought our guys executed a good plan. Uh, coaches helped put together a real good plan for them to, to take away their pick and roll defense and. Um, Guys played hard. Some of our young guys in particular, Sean Sellers and Francis Capway, I think are they're growing as defenders. They're getting better uh, defensively. And, and uh, at a time, they would have really hurt us a month ago, and right now they're contributing. And David Brown in that game for Western Michigan, in the first game that the Cardinals played, dropped 35, hit seven, made threes. He made four shots this time around. Kind of a snapshot of the way the defense played. Let's start it off on offense, though, for you guys here early. Franco House, you guys controlled possession for almost the first full minute of the game. House knocks down the jumper over Connor Tavey. They could, did a pretty good job to limit his looks, though. He was only 4 of 12. They really did, and, it, uh, you know, they guarded him one-on-one -on -one with Connor Tavey, and that's the first time somebody all year had guarded him one-on-one, -on -one and, uh, and he did a really good job. thought it was a great job by Connor, but a learning lesson for Franco. Francis Chiappe, the trailing three, makes it an 11-7 to ball game. Talked about tough shooting week. Cards were just 4 of 23. That was Francis's only make in the game. And then on the flip side, Taylor Perry, no breathing room. I mean, Rocco was on him. Yeah, it was a tough shot. It's part of the game. You know, so we, both teams will hit those sometimes. It's, it was just a tough shot. That, however, is not a tough shot. Mario Matasevich, he was one of 11 guys that played in this game for Western. Eight of them scored when we talk about depth and getting Kimmy back and what that does for numbers. Jeremiah Davis down 10 makes it an eight-point game. He had a couple of points, a couple of assists in the game as well. Franco House gets inside, and this is just good offensive rebounding. That's an effort play. You had 14 O-boards. Bo Calhoun puts that one back. Yeah, Bo's really <clears throat> really emerging on the offensive end, getting better with every game he's playing. David Brown overplays a little bit. And Sean Sellers, a little hesitation, but yeah, I got a free land of the bucket. Yeah, it's great. Great uh, to see him going to the rack, something we'd like to see him do more. Franco House, the three ball, gives you guys the lead with a minute left in the half. He just needed to see one go down, 5% prior to that, yeah. and, uh, and he took two in the game. He took another after that one. Yeah, we don't want him shooting a lot, but if he's open out there, he's more than capable, and it was great to see one go in for him. We go to the second half. Cardinals are trailing by four. The lob for Bo Calhoun again. He had a couple of really good games this week. We'll talk more about the, the second one in a bit. Kick to Sean Sellers there. Three assists for him also. Yeah, it was great pass by Bo, and really him emerging as a shooter is something that in that case it's not it opened up Sean Sellers in the rotation. A couple of looks at some Western <coughs> Michigan offense here. We mentioned 39% from the field, but a couple of big buckets when it mattered. David Brown takes it to the rack. We saw Connor Tavey. Cardinals battle back, though. Here's Sean Sellers on the steal, and the runout goes the other way. Makes it a four-point game again. Still not going away. Five minutes left. Ball State down 44-39. It's Bo Calhoun. Little jumper. You give him a little bit of breathing room. He'll pull up in your face. That's his spot. You know, 15 to 17 feet. He's a great, great shooter. Drake Lamont, backdoor cut. Freshman big man for Western Michigan. We saw a couple of those both games this week. Yeah, didn't uh, didn't uh, help off of the back screen. That's something that we got to do a better job of. Card's still in it though. Sean Sellers. He makes ridiculous threes. He does. He can really shoot. That was obviously a really tough shot. And like kind of like Westerns early on. Those tend to even out over the course of the game. They made it a two-point game. Cardinals had possession back with 14 seconds left. Didn't get the look you wanted though when Western Michigan winds up victorious. 53-48. You see Bo 15 points, 5 of 9. Sean Sellers 13 points. And Sean's come on really strong offensively here. He's had a couple of really good games back to back to back. You know what he's been is consistent. He's been, Sean to his credit, is uh, he's had a couple of bad games but for a freshman he's he was our leading scorer in non-conference. He's been our leading scorer in the conference. He's he's uh, or throughout the course of the 20 whatever games we've played. He's just uh, he's a really good player who's done it from day one. Freshman of the year? 
I think so. And, you know, he's certainly going to get my vote. But it's, uh, if he's not freshman of the year, he's going to be all freshman team. But, but uh, if you look at what he's done all year, and he's, he's getting better on the defensive end now too. And uh, I think he's certainly deserving. And that's, that's, a, that's an effort thing. Because you challenge the guys. That's him saying, hey, I want to get better. I want to be better. It, it's it's a, certainly an effort thing. And Sean always works hard. And some of it is just creating the right habits. And those take time. You know, as we've talked about a lot, Sean never guarded a perimeter player yeah. in high school. Never. That's kind of like taking a linebacker and making him a cornerback, you know, in football. It just takes time to get used to guarding routes. And uh, in this his case, it takes time to get used to guarding the ball, learning to play in a stance for 40 minutes. But as I've challenged him, he's accepted the challenge, and he's really getting better at it. We go from that to the Toledo game. Cardinals falling 70-59 on the road to a team that right now is the number two seed if the MAC tournament were to start today. And it was a four-point game at the under-eight media timeout. You had only seven guys. They're running guys through left and right. Uh, awesome atmosphere. Their senior yeah. day. Their seniors came out ready to play, and you guys punched back. We talked about mentality. You had yeah. to throw a punch. You threw punches. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I thought our guys really fought hard, and uh, it was um, fun to see. You know, it's fun to watch Toledo and Central do what they've done, and um, it was almost a sellout and re uh, rewarding those great seniors from Toledo. But our guys stepped up to the challenge, and, and I thought played a really competitive game. Toledo played Duke earlier in the non-conference season, by the way. Jaleel Okafor scored 27 points. Bo Calhoun dropped 30. He did. Now, that's the only first time the Bo's <laughs> been compared to Jaleel Okafor, but, but, uh, but Bo is certainly playing really good basketball and uh, really put us on our, our shoulders. We had a tough, tough shooting night. Our guards went three for 27 from the floor, and that's unusual to say the least. And, uh, and Bo really kind of picked us, picked us up and carried us to the point where you know, we, it was anyone's game there down the stretch. Let's take a look at the highlights. Bo had 30 points in 31 minutes for the Cardinals, and he did it uberly efficiently as well. He was 13 of 17 from the field. Yeah, I'm so happy for him because he's he's such a blue collar player. He's he's uh, one of my favorite players. Just very humble, very hardworking, and has uh, gotten better throughout the whole course of the year. So Sean Sellers on the second make. It's more about uh, Bo Calhoun here on the second. Cards started out slow. It was a weird game. Both teams were really cold from the field. It was, I think, eight to five after eight minutes of play. Yeah. Then things really started to pick up, though, on both sides. Yeah, they got loose a little bit. You see some of Bo's points, like right there, were really a product of great offense and the team really sharing the ball. Good, good pass by Sean Sellers. Reverse layup made it a six-point game. Then Franco House just bullies through Jordan Loft. Maybe gets fined for flopping at the next level. Uh -huh. Nathan Booth able to come back, though. It's a nine-point game there. We go to the half. It's 36 25 Cardinals trail, but you come back out in the second half, you still move. Jeremiah Davis was 0 for 10, but mm. he played well. He didn't shoot well, he played well. He did. Seven assists, you know, six rebounds, had a few steals, a block, and his, he has a stat sheet stuffer, so to speak. And, uh, but unfortunately, the shot just hasn't fallen for him. But hopefully, uh, soon he'll get back in his rhythm on that part and start making a few more shots because his overall floor game is good. Here's more Bo Calhoun, just gets into the lane with the hook shot, really diversifies his offense too. He can do a lot of things. Yeah, he can score inside in the paint like you saw there. He was three for four from behind the arc in this game. And uh, he's got a good mid-range jumper, jumper and he can pass too. So. And they're giving him too much room. It's almost like they don't respect the three, and he's he's making people pay. Yeah, it's a, he's we've been letting him shoot it because we watch what he does every day in practice. We felt like this game was coming for him. Sean Sellers, the step inside two there, makes it a seven-point game, 60-53. Really good to see Sean using his shot fake because teams have started chasing him off the three-point line, and him to be able to use a shot fake and, and make him pay a price for it is important. The soft rims on that last shot as well. Bo gets the high bounce, it drops down. 70-59, though the final score. Toledo victorious, but Bo Calhoun, 30 points, first 30-point performance, two years and one day for the Cardinals, almost two years to the day since Juwan Scaife dropped 34 on Central Michigan his senior season. You're not going to see a whole lot of better offensive performances in the league this year. It's one of the better ones. Yeah, 30 points on 17 shots. It was a great job by Bo, and, and, uh, and, he, and he <clears throat> by him shooting the ball like he does, it not only creates shots for him, but it can create shots for other people. And, you know, we, we need to get <clears> – <throat> A few more players clicking on the same day, and uh, if we do that, then I think I feel like we're due to emerge here as a team and have a really good offensive night. Let's talk about the shooting numbers, though. Mm -hmm. We mentioned what the guards were in the game: three for twenty-seven between the three guards. Uh, if you add in Sean Sellers, seven for thirty-seven. They're all good shooters, mm -hmm. and you look at the last four games; the numbers aren't really where you want them to be. Mm -hmm. Is some of it a pro? I mean, where does it come from? Is it a product of they're young, they're freshmen, they haven't played a season that, the, that that's know, this long? That's a good question. There's really two things. One that we're trying to address. Part of it is 
teams have started chasing us off the three-point line. They're running at us to, to get us off because we're a good shooting team. And for a while, we weren't adjusting. We'd started really shooting challenge shots, and we've been showing our team those clips, trying to get them to mix in shot fakes to, to make that one more, so to speak. In this game, Sean Sellers shot faked three times and led to six points on three shot fakes, two mid-range pull-ups and the layup for Bo, which you saw. So that's part of the solution for us is when guys are crazy running at us to mix in a shot fake and get the ball back to the rim. And then, uh, and then part of it, I think, is fatigue for us. You know, it's, it's late into the year and maybe losing our legs a little bit. And that's my job is to try to pull back a little bit and do a little more shooting this week, maybe a little less up and down and see if we can't get our rhythm back behind New York. Cardinals have two games coming up this week. Both of them are at home. They'll take on Eastern Michigan first tomorrow night and then on Friday, actually. It's, I think it might be the first Friday game of the season. Uh, it'll be Senior Day or Matt Kamenicki Day at Worthen Arena. Uh, you, you bid farewell to your one lone senior. Always bittersweet uh, to have Senior Day come. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be sad to see him go. You know, it's, it's, we're going to try our best to get him ready so we can at least put him out there for a little bit to give him the kudos that he deserves. He's a... He's a warrior, and um, it would have been great to have him healthy here during his time, but nonetheless, even despite his, when he's played, really prior to the Western Michigan game when he got hurt, he was, he was one of the best players in the conference. Career high, 7.7 .7 points per game, 7.5 rebounds per game this year for Cami as well. That's also a career high, and he's a guy who you never saw play until this year because he was out all last season, mm -hmm. but mentality-wise, really wanted to get better during that year off. He's just a winner. You know, he's <clears throat> he'll sacrifice his body as he's done numerous times. He really could care less what his own stats are. He's uh, he's he's a great competitor. You can tell he grew up in a family of athletes <clears throat> based on the way he approaches every game. He just he is all in to a T. And uh, you know, I've said this many times before. If it wasn't for his bad body, I'm confident in saying he would have been able to have a 10-year career playing professional basketball. He's he would have helped make someone a lot better. What's amazing is how much he grew up as a person. I mean, physically, <laughs> looks like a much different guy. He, he, he looks better. He looks older. Yeah. He, he's grown up in college. And he's, he's developed a lot of self-discipline. You know, he's, he's, uh, two years ago, he was about 14.5% body fat. And right now, he's down to 220 pounds. He's worked despite his injury. He eats right in an effort to try to give his back the best chance to be healthy. And uh, everybody says it. You know, Greg Lansing, when we played Indiana State, said after the game the difference was Matt Kamenicki. When I got the job here at Ball State, I ran into Steve Hawkins. The first thing he said was, Coach Matt Kamenicki, one of my favorite players, he's the most underrated player in the conference. I think he's respected around the league for what he does. Cardinals this year, and there's a, a variety of factors. But with Matt Kamenicki, 7-11. and 11. Without him, 0-9. Yeah, and that, that just really shows you the difference. And if you even go inside the numbers, part of that is obviously the schedule got harder. But if you go inside the numbers, defensively, how much we miss him. Yeah. Our numbers on offense were pretty similar with him and without him. Rebounding, we dropped a little bit. But when Matt Cam and Nicky doesn't play, it, uh, it impacts our defense in, in a big way. You can run down the list of injuries he's had since he's been here. We've done that on the show. Back, hip, wrist, knee, other knee concussion at one point I think his freshman year mm -hmm. um, battles all through it and I mean kind of consummate student athlete too leaving here with a masters yeah with great. an MBA with an MBA going to be very successful in life no matter what he does and uh, if you think about what someone like him has to manage you know the 20 hours a week of practice time the excessive travel the missing class studying as hard as he does he's in the, every captain's meeting with me each week understanding the dynamics of the team, what bushes, buttons he has to push to help the team really click better. And those are all things that are going to help some company uh, tremendously as Matt steps into a role in the business world because of the skill set he's learned here as a student athlete. Now that we've talked Kamenicki up, uh, let's take a look at the other side of Matt Kamenicki. This is the camaraderie that exists in a college basketball team. We, we always talk about the basketball stuff and wanting to be better on the basketball court, but part of the college athlete experience is the friendships and the bonds and how you kind of grow and the teammates and all of the relationships that you build, form, and make. Uh, there are five guys on this team. We've talked about them many times on this show. Kamenicki is one of them. They live together. They call themselves the Jackson Boys. Their house is on Jackson Street. And we thought it would be fun to peel back the curtain, go inside the house on Jackson Street and introduce you to the Jackson Boys in sort of a sitcom -y, real world special that we call the Jackson Boys.
every guy's unique in this house. I think it's kind of cool where none of us are from the same background or the same area. Like we got, I'm from Indy, Rocco's from Chicago, Big's from Toronto, uh, Frank is from Elkhart, and Cammy's from Clarkson. None of us even knew who each other was before we met each other. Oh, you have 11s? Have we don't have a good There's no such card. It's a jack. Uh, we play cards. I haven't thrown a card down this whole game. I swear. Uh -uh. The best of card games probably probably me. Then it had to go Ryan, Rocco. Big's probably the worst at card games. What do you want me to do? I, I have 15 cards. You're up, bro. Oh. These guys play Euchre. Uh, I, I don't know what that is. I've never heard of it in my life. This game called President. We play poker. We play in between. We played blackjack. I mean, you can do a lot with a deck of cards and five dudes. You don't have anything higher than this. Is that you? you? Oh. Go. Yeah, I heard so. Cammy thinks he's the best, but he's probably the worst at everything we play. You know, always coming in saying he's going to beat us in this and that. Yeah, I'm not good. There's certain games I'm good at, but the ones that they like to play, I'm not really too too good at. I think I'm not the worst in Mario Kart. You're third, Cammy. I'm first. No, I'm not third. Who's third? Two. It's me, baby. Let's oh, go. Let's go. What did you pass me with? He didn't have anything. Take your dog too, man. No, he didn't have anything. What did you pass me with? That makes it worse if he didn't have anything. You got the dog. He beat you on wrong steering. He gets rowdy in here. You got people yelling. If you if you not yelling, it's because you're losing. With Matt, he's quiet all the time. No, no, I want Diddy Kong. No, 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 I want Diddy Kong. No, no, no. That the blue shell's me, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. As soon as you lose in this game. No, bro, bro what? <laughs> I just I I, Hey, that's. See. Yeah. That's all hey, okay. Franco was the best at Mario Kart, but he got dethroned by Ryan and Vic. I'm the best at Mario Kart. Second best, probably. Probably Ryan. I'm either playing video games with Cammy and Rocco or we're all playing a board game. Uh, 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 <laughs> taking the, all the hard pieces. And uh, that's always Rocco and he always loses. Oh! You've been telling me you loser! Why are you do you always do that? <laughs> he always goes for the impossible piece. And that's, what that's, what that's, that's what I thought. That's what I tried to do. That was not impossible. That was barely. It's the bottom piece, and there's only one left. Rocco! Oh, the dog, name's Rocco, of course. Uh, Cammy loves me so much that he had to name his dog after me. I just couldn't get enough. It's Puppy Rocco is the first Rocco in the house. And no, Human Rocco is second. I got Rocco, Puppy Rocco, before I even knew Rocco. Human Rocco. I was always looking over my shoulder every time the name was called, but you, more, more than likely it was for the dog, not me. This is the favorite Rocco in the house. That's Rocco number one. I wasn't a dog person when I moved in here, but um, me and him, I think we're really close. This man will suck down some human food now. I remember one time we got pizza, breadsticks, and two drinks, and we set them on the table, the coffee table that we had out there. And we went into our rooms and came back out, and it was not even like a minute and a half the whole pizza, the whole breadsticks, both the drinks with the lids off were drank. Like, he just went to town on our food. We didn't even know what to say. We just laughed. Like, he was just laying there next to it looking at us like. This man is notorious for stealing the cheese sauce. Before I even look at the pizza, it's gone. Probably not a good diet, but, you know, I like to keep the calories up. Cammy leaves his trash out on the floor all over the place. He thinks that his dog's going to pick it up, but no. I'm, I'm pretty much the only one that cleans. Uh, the house, so I mean, it gets pretty messy. Franco's, Franco's a clean guy. I'm the only person in the house that ever clean. Frank, Franco will do it when I mean, when he gets to the point where it's like it gets disgusting, he'll actually, you know, pick, pick up a mop. All in all, it's pretty fun. Uh, these guys are like my brothers. Obviously, the house has problems with it. It's not the nicest joint, but uh, I think the fact that we're all together makes it okay, and we get through it. So. I might take that sweater. I just like everybody points fingers. Matt yeah. doesn't clean. I'm the only one that cleans. Franco's the only one that cleans. Nobody cleans. You can see the competitive <laughs> nature of the student athletes, and uh, they're competitive in Mario Kart, com competitive in cards, and competitive when it comes to who cleans the most in the house. Right. What's amazing about it, too, by the way, is that they legitimately do that. Like, you've got five right. college athletes, or five college guys, 20 year old men, who sit around a table and for fun will play Jenga. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I laugh because I, I play that with my kids, by the way. But I'm glad I got a chance to see that. I'd never seen the house. And most importantly, when I leave here, I have a meeting with uh, Rocco to discuss the pizza with the nacho cheese sauce. <laughs> He, he said he needs to keep the calorie count up because he runs it off a lot. He does, and you know what? Grilled chicken has lots of calories, too, so <laughs> you used to get to eat more of it. I'm glad we left off the number of times they eat the pizza a week. Yeah. We'll say it's one. Okay, we'll say it's one. <laughs> we'll say it's one. <laughs> All right, let's go from there. Uh, let's play teammates in a hat, if we can grab the hat. Um, this is our uh, favorite game. We've played this before on the program. Uh, we, we grab the hat. We uh, put in names of people that you've coached with or uh, – I'd say played with, but mm -hmm. um, guys that you've you've been around in basketball. Let's see right. what we uh, pull out, and uh, let's talk about who we pull out of that bag. Herb Sendek. Herb Sendek. Yes. Arizona State head coach. Arizona State head coach. So best, uh, best Herb Sendek story I can say would be uh, Herb Sendek was uh, just left Kentucky. He was a <clears throat> head coach at Miami of Ohio. I was a graduate manager, and he was so detail-oriented we had a pregame chalk talk that went on for maybe 35 or 40 minutes. We covered every under out of bounds play, side out of bounds play, press offense, press defense, anything that could have happened in the game. And by the end of it, the whole team and coaching staff, we left the uh, locker room feeling as if we just took the SAT test. But Bill Comar, now the director of basketball operations, uh, said it best. We got out onto the court. He looked at our staff, Fad Mata, myself, and said, uh, Countries have gone to war less prepared than we are for this basketball game. And I thought it was well said and really uh, why he's so successful as a coach. He's just, he really knows his stuff, works hard at it, and is very detail-oriented. Beat Arizona in 1995, first round of the NCAA tournament. Rode that to NC State, went to the NIT the next year at Miami. Um, went to NC State, then went to Arizona State. Had James Harden, a lot of really good guys, and, and has been very successful. And was the first head coach you worked for, right? Was the, well, yeah, not counting my stint as a manager at Wisconsin. Sure. He was the first one as a, as a uh, post-collegiate uh, worker. And just, if you look at Herb's kind of quote-unquote family tree, assistants Huge. who have moved on to be successful head coaches, it's incredible. And it's really because you learn so much for him in terms of attention to detail. He's, the way he runs his skill program in the spring, the way he plans out his scheduling, the way we manage your budget, the way you hire a staff, the way you do all of it, that's where... To me, he's, he's, uh, he's, he had a, brought a corporate mindset to college basketball and how to run a company. And I think everybody that worked for him really took a lot from him uh, on that, and certainly myself included. It's a coaching tree, by the way, that uh, you're a part of. And uh, mm. now on Wikipedia, you are officially a part of that. Is that right? Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. We got, uh, we got a couple more. All right. So um, <clears throat> next one here, one of my favorites, Mark. Lions played for you at two places. He did unique uh, situation with Mark Lyons. He, uh, I had a chance to recruit him at uh, was uh, Chris Mack really was a primary recruiter, but I was the first one to watch him play when he was at Brewster Prep. He was a teammates with Isaiah Thomas, and I uh, had a chance to coach him at Xavier, and then I had a chance to coach him again at Arizona when he graduated from Xavier. But uh, I'll try to keep this story quick. But best Mark Lyons story I could tell you is. He was playing at Arizona, and we were playing in the Diamond Head Classic against Miami Hurricanes. And uh, Miami Hurricanes had this point guard that I thought was great watching him on film. I just thought he was – I couldn't – I didn't know that much about him coming yeah. into the game. And so in the scouting report, everything was designed to stop this guard. And Mark had really never heard of him. So I kept talking up this guard. He's the key to their team, how good he is, all the different things he could do. And every time I talked about him, I could see Mark getting more irritated and more irritated. <laughs> And, uh, and the game came on, and we won hand go handedly. Mark shut the guard down, his credit. He played the game of his life at both ends of the floor, yeah. dominated, and came to me afterwards, mad as could be, and said, Coach, stop blowing up these guards that can't play. <laughs> and he had taken it as a personal challenge. He thought I'd talk this guy up too much. And, and, uh, but the, the punchline to the story is that guard was Shane Larkin. <laughs> for the Miami <laughs> Hurricanes, and uh, to Mark's credit, he shut him down. To Shane's credit, he was a lottery pick. So yeah. it was, uh, I think we were both right in that scenario. It works out for both, because Mark's playing pro now, too. So yeah, he is, and he's, he's doing got, really well. And he was in uh, camp with the Raptors, mm -hmm. and then uh, overseas, I think he's in France now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
Um, let's talk about some guys that hopefully can can follow that same path for you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. we got about a minute left in the show, so okay. Eastern Michigan, next up on the docket. You've played them once, you beat them once. Yeah, we played them once, played a good game, especially on the defensive end. You know, they have a couple of really good individual players, Ray Lee being one of them. And uh, Ray has a connection with some of our guys. Ray Lee was at... Uh, at prep school in Huntington Prep with both Jeremiah Davis and Francis Kiapwe, so they've known each other for a long time. But he's he's the engine that makes them go on offense. Carrington Ward's 1A, yeah. and uh, and we have to do a great job defensively on those two guys. Eastern Michigan's very good on defense. It's hard to score. They're not great on offense. you got to lock those two guys down to win the game. Game will be live on the Ball State Sports Network tomorrow night. Ray Lee, by the way, last seven or eight games, 26 points, 32 points, 33 points against Western Michigan, Akron, and Ohio, respectively. Guy can flat out shoot. Again, that game is on the Ball State Sports Network. You can find it right here tomorrow night. And uh, we, this is all we got for the year. So uh, thanks for doing it. And uh, you got it. We'll see you next year. Good, 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 uh, good year of shows. I appreciate the help of everybody around here. And so thanks so much. And we'll see you a year from now. We will see you guys for a uh, year from now as well. It's the James Whitford Show on the Ball State Sports Network. Good night.